step here. So remember how to factor four terms? Or how we said we were going to factor four terms? We had to use something called factoring by grouping. Let's see why this is our only option, okay? Firstly, I want to, want to look at that. Can you recognize that there are, in fact, four terms there? No. All right, good. Does it have a greatest common factor? Because that's our number one thing. Does it have a greatest common factor? Okay. Does it have two terms? I'm, so, I'm sorry, exactly two terms. Does it have exactly two terms? Could it be a difference of squares, a difference of cubes, or some cubes then? So we move down. Does it have three terms? The next thing on your list was four terms. I said factoring by grouping. How many people have seen factoring by grouping before? How many people have never seen it or completely forgotten, which is all right? You can raise your hands. That's OK. OK, good. <clears throat> factoring by grouping works like this. Since there's four terms, you look at the first two, and you look at the last two kind of independently and you factor out the greatest common factor from each of those pairs of terms. So let's ignore these terms for now. We're going to look just at these ones. Look just at those ones. Can you see a greatest common factor in 5x squared plus 5? Yeah. What's it have there? Five. Let's factor out the 5 from just these two terms. So from here, notice how I'm putting a little bracket here. If we factor out a 5, remember we're dividing, what's going to be remaining in our parentheses there? x plus 1. Be careful, yeah, we do have the x squared here. Oh, you know what, I think I messed this up. Yeah, I did. Change that to a y. Sorry and change this one to an x. Figures. Did you change it? Yeah. Were you writing in pen and now you have scribbles? <laughs> okay, so we have y squared plus 5. We saw that the 5 is common to both terms. We factor out the 5 and we're left with y squared plus 1 inside our parentheses. We're going to look at the next one. So we, we ignore the part we just did. We look at this part. Is there anything in common between x, y squared plus x that we can factor out? Let's factor out the x. We have to factor out the positive x. We're going to have that plus there still. What's going to be remaining if we factor out the x? Y squared. Y squared. Perfect. So we use some basic factoring here, factoring the 5, factoring the x, to make it in this form. How many people are with it on getting down to this form? Feel okay about that? Here's the cool thing about factoring by grouping. If you look at that, this is like one big term, and this is like one big term because it's added together. These are a couple factors in there. What you look for now is in these big terms, is there anything that's still in common? This is why factored by grouping works. If you still have something in common, i.e. the y squared plus 1's, you can continue to factor that out. Now here's how you do it. Remember, factoring out is dividing. I'm going to make this real clear for you so you see why this works, because a lot of people get kind of screwed up on factoring by grouping because of because it looks a little strange. Here's what you do. Remember here, when you factored out the 5, the 5 went out front, and you divided each term by 5, and that's how we got these things. Are you clear on that? We're going to do the same thing with this. Since we have y squared plus 1 and y squared plus 1, we're factoring it out, which means we're dividing it out, which means when we write this out front, just like we did over here, we are going to create a new set of parentheses. We just have to worry about what goes in these parentheses. Now, if we're dividing out this large term by y squared plus 1, what we're factoring, what's going to be left? 
I'm just from this part. What's going to be like? Just a five. Notice how this is kind of similar. I'm going to do this off to the side and then I'm going to erase it. Very similar to what, how I taught you factoring at the very beginning of our, our lesson yesterday. If you're factoring out the first term by the greatest common factor, which is the y squared plus 1 in this case, what's going to happen there? What are you going to be left with? That's where we're getting the 5 right there. And that 5 is coming from the fact that we are dividing out y squared plus 1. It's going to the front because we are dividing it away term by term. Not sure if you're clear on that one. Yeah, that's confusing to a lot of people. Like, well, where did it go? Why don't we have it twice? What's the next thing that we're going to have? For the same reason that just happened. We're dividing it out. So the reason why we have it two times here and only once here is because you're factoring it. I can give you a different example if that didn't make a whole lot of sense to you. Think about this, okay? If you had x squared plus 3x, you'll need to write this just to kind of follow along for a second. Notice how we have an x twice, don't we? But if we were to factor the x out, we are going to have an x here, but the x disappears. Notice how we're taking the x and we're, we're moving it to the front because we're dividing it by each term. Or, sorry, we're dividing each term by it. The same thing's happening here. We're dividing each term by the y squared plus 1. We're moving it to the front of an expression. Whatever's left after we divide, goes in the second parentheses, including that sign. Yes, no? We're going to get a whole bunch more practice on this too. So if you didn't get it right now, I hope that you did. But if you didn't, we're going to get a whole lot more practice. <clears throat> See, now we're going to use this. And we're going to be able to factor three terms that might not have a 1 in the place of our A coefficient. Let me show you what that looks like. So we've done these ones. You feel pretty good about the diamond method so far, right? Okay, grouping, you feel okay about the grouping? Okay, let's go through our steps. First thing you look for, what's the first thing you look for? GCF. Good. Does it have a GCF here? Does it have a greatest common factor? Unfortunately not. So there's nothing we can factor out, but you know what? You still should look for it every single time. Because sometimes I'm going to give you some nasty big problems that look horrible, but if you factor the greatest common factor, they become really easy. So that's what you need to look for first. Otherwise, you deal with a diamond problem with like 6,000 on the bottom. You don't want to do that. So factor greatest common factor right off the bat. If it doesn't have one, well, that's okay. But you look for it first. Second thing you do is, what's the second thing you do? Great, okay, so someone on the, my right hand side over here, how many terms do we have? Three. So that means a difference of squares, sum of uh, cubes, or a difference of cubes is off the table. We're looking at a diamond method. Factoring by grouping won't work because we don't have four terms. So we're down to diamond method. Can you tell me what number goes on the top of our diamond problem? Good. Can you tell me what number goes on the bottom? Is it negative seven or something else? Good, because we multiply the A times the C. That's why I had to do the A times the C over here, so this one didn't seem so weird. Uh, when we multiplied A times C, yeah, it was 1. It really didn't change that number. Over here, it is going to. This is not going to be negative 7. It's going to be negative 14. Are you with me on this? Okay, good. And the next thing we do, it's the most important part. I mean, everybody can fill this out, right? Y'all can fill out negative 5 and negative 14. That's the easy part. It just... From here, multiply it there. The hard part <coughs> is now thinking of the two numbers that add to negative 5 and multiply to negative 14. I'm going to give you a couple seconds, probably 10 seconds. Do this on your own. This is the part that you need to practice with, okay? So try this right now. If you know it, great. If you don't know it, think about it. Remember, those signs give you clues. 
Negative on the bottom says they have to be different signs. Negative on the top says the bigger one has to be negative. Have you thought about it? Have you found them? Yeah. What do you found? Yeah. Seven, two, somehow. That's great. Okay. Which one's got to be negative? The seven or the two? So negative seven and positive two. Let's double check, okay, just to make sure we have this. Negative seven times two is negative 14. If they multiply, yeah. Negative seven plus two is negative five. Yeah. That means I have it right. If this step works, the rest of it will work out. The only problem is, let's say we went back and did it this way. Oh, yeah, great. This is easy. We're going to get x. Don't write this down, by the way. Just watch for a second. x minus 7 and x plus 2. We go, hey, we're done. Is, does that work? No. Check it with your distribution. We get x squared. Oh, right off the bat, we know it's wrong. What are we supposed to get when we distribute? That's a problem. That means this direct method, without extra steps, is not the way to go for this. Here, yes. We're going to talk about extra steps versus not extra steps. If you do not have a coefficient besides 1, you don't have any extra steps. It's very easy. You take these factors, they go right there. If you have an A that is not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something else, you're going to have an extra step here. So write that down. This is where you're going to notice what was wrong. An extra step. Here's the extra step. What the diamond method allows you to do is take these numbers and break this middle term up. Watch what's going to happen. Please watch. This. I'm going to leave this guy alone. This is going to be 2x squared still. However, this minus 5, I'm going to split that up. Notice how I could write this instead as minus 7x plus 2x back up here, minus 7. Do me a favor, look at that real quick. Does this expression still equal this expression? So I have not changed it besides the fact that I've split up this middle term using these two numbers including their signs. Now you're if you're with that. Why did I do that? Factor by grouping. Yeah, brilliant. Factor by grouping. Because as soon as I split the middle term, look how many terms it had now. What do you use for four terms? Ta da. Exactly. exactly what we just learned how to do this factoring by grouping stuff. This makes it easy. This makes it a step by step process. You do the dining method. If it has an A besides 1 out front, you split that up and you factor by grouping. If it doesn't, you go directly to your factors. So, can we factor this by grouping? The answer is, if you can do this, factoring by grouping will definitely be possible in this. If you can't do this, it's not factorable. So let's look at factoring by grouping. We look at the first two, and we look at the last two. Look at the first two terms there. Is there anything that's going to factor out of 2x squared minus 7x? Let's factor the x. If we do, we're going to get 2x, because we take away one of those x's, we divide that out, it's 2x, and then what? Because we're dividing away 1x. Well, wait a second. Look at the next two terms. What goes into 2x minus 7? Is there a greatest common factor there? Yeah. Anything besides 1? If all you find is 1, write the 1 so it doesn't confuse you later. So if there's nothing else that happens, you go, oh, okay, well, at least I know I have a 1. You're going to see why in a second. At least I have a 1. What's left?